Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. I finally tried my first stream ever in my life last week. It was such a fun journey. I really like how I can interact with you guys directly. I will definitely try to do that more often. So for today's video, well y'all know the transition. When there is a new path came out, a review on that path and the character. If I have already done reviewing that certain character, then I will do a minor update and focus on their new path. But before we start to dig in Aisha new path, we shall bring out some latest news from KR Observer. If you happen to scroll over my community tab or Instagram, you probably know the upcoming winter updates plan that are coming in the next few months. But if you didn't, don't worry, I'll go through it with you guys again. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification. Follow me on Instagram in case you missed out the updates again. Also join our Discord server for any in-game help and check my Twitch channel too. I will be doing streams here and there as well. So first, the 64-bit client has finally launched on KL server. It will help to run the game more smooth, better resolution, and less crashing issues. I really needed that for better raid experience. They also launched an epic CP boosting event too. With any existing character in your account that's under 2 million CP, you can select one of them to participate in this event with all these goodies. Riggle set, FOJ weapon, and game accessories, so on and so on. It would be a nice boosting for your character if you want to try out birth rate sooner. Hopefully this event will come to NA soon. If we are insane like we used to do. This event should be hitting NA around June 6th, but I cannot guarantee. It's just predictions. And also it's limited to one character per account. I think I'm going to make a blue hand since I always want to build a high gear BL long time ago. How about you? Comment and let me know which class are you building via this event if this comes to NA. Second news. New Village. It's been 4 years since the proper new town's release. I guess a lot of you feel tired of chilling in Ariano Town already. I'm pretty hyped about it. Also dungeons and new gears. After 2 years of Regal Set's release, KOG finally decided to launch a new set of gear. We haven't got any details yet, but players are guessing the new set has similar evolution stage farming like VOS does. I guess this time it will cost not only your money, but also sold. But does that mean our Regal gear are ready to be bank shareable? If that's so, that would be pretty damn awesome. Third news, Trading Board Revamp. Trading Board Maximum Trading ED will be rise from 5B to 10B. Adding price track for items, details searching, favorite features, and wishlist features. I think it would be a nice update. Fourth news, more 4 path is coming. Raven and Aura's 4 path is on the way. Raven 4 path will be out around January on KRL server, and Aura's will be out on February. So you can probably see them arrive on February and March, or even mains and our mains where you add. Are you guys exciting? Okay, that's the upcoming updates plans from PR server so far. Let's get back to our features character of today's video, Aisha, and her new path. Aisha is such a poor character, not gonna lie. Developer of the game have some issue against her ever since third job release. All of her path became supporting class, and all of them has pretty low skill damage in general. And when we think they finally done nerfing her with her buffing aura with CP scaling, another nerf is coming towards her. AS and MTM aura maximum value cut from 40% to 25%. That almost half of the value. RIP. Well, they are just a gap from per 500k CP scaling into 400k. But to me, that's ain't balancing, but straight nerf to her. Luckily, all students suffer much from this nerf. She kind of stayed the same position with her buffing aura and debuffing. AES got some minor buffing on her self buff. Let's see if we can see her DPSing soon. And all pretty much stays the same as before. A useful buffer and debuffer for parties. MPM still does some good damage against large bosses, but all three of them didn't receive a big change or rework yet. We'll see how it goes in the future. I basically cover all of them in my past Aisha video. So go check it out! Okay, 
so let's run straight forward to her newest path, Lauren Azov. Let's go through her law a little bit. After losing her magic ring and a great mana of hers, Aja didn't gave up but find a new way to enhance her magic power. He found her new self in the field of alchemy, and she became very obsessed with it. She also discovered the power of ancient magic, while the nights and days of surrounding herself with all the knowledge of alchemy. After years of studying, she realized that the mortal body can't fulfill her desire of seeking the truth of magic. So she found a way to become one with the Philosopher's Stone and keep seeking the truth with her new immortal self. I guess that's why her third job slash is so much different from her second and first job, since she became her new self, so much sassier. Azoth has decent clearing power. She has a lot of big AoE skills, but most of her clearing skills are cast from her self radius. So instead of clearing in front of the group of mobs, you have to cast your skills in the center of the mobs. So you need to pay attention to your positioning. She doesn't have much problem from clearing in general. But since her skill damage aren't that high and depends on the buffs, you may suffer a bit during mid game when transitioned between gears. And her bossing damage is quite depends on boss size, buff management, debuffs, and skill rotation. Makes her not an ideal but still potential damage dealer. Matter wise, she has great matter management upon clearing and using blue flash. She can regen mana per second when you use blue flash, but since it will decrease your character size, you manage your buffs to ensure you have the max size for clearing, but it is useful to downsize for some situation like facing small mobs. And upon reaching third job, her passive may even make her mana management better. She regen mana and health when defeating enemies. You basically need zero pots when running solo along with your flash buff, which is perfect for those of you who want to save some potions. When it comes to party buffing, Azov is one of the new top tier support. Although she is a physical class, her buffs actually benefit both magical and physical parties. She got damage buff when enemy in poison state. ASD increase when cleansing teammates or in philosopher state. Critical damage buff when clicking on white flash. Also a fun fact, the flash she creates is prioritized party members who doesn't have the buff yet. So you just need to spam the flash skill, eventually every party member will get it. Physical and magical damage buff, defense ignore buff, max mana and health buff aura, super armor and defense buff, and also one of the most useful buff, 15 seconds of the pot cooldown. That's pretty useful right? As an immortal, for sure she won't lack of rest passive, but even her death is beneficial for the parties. All these buffs makes her a great support of all parties. One of the must have support in Wraith. So, Azov have great clearing abilities, great management on mana for general dungeon, especially for soloing, great debuffing on mobs for mob damage, god tier support for raids, super useful utility buffs, very easy to enter raids no matter you're fresh or not, the mana support for sure. So it's kind of like Snacks without healing or CL without CD buffs, which is still pretty solid. She got a maximized stat boosting passive, which is rare for Aisha. It makes her has more space to shock at other stats. And her masterclass skills is actually one of the most top damaging one. Weird, eh? But keep in mind she is not an easy to pilot class, especially at endgame. Her system is semi-complex, but it will get better when you unlock the level 90 lock skill passive. She has major CD issues since her fast casting speed and skill spamming, and she is very tight on skill slots. Buffering, summoning skills, and teleport already took up 4 slots of her skills, makes her requirement on CD scaling even higher at endgame races. She also requires buff management for self and party, 
Also, size and control is critical at some situations. Though I really like to troll my friends with miniature pots. Also, her damage dealing might still not the best. Since she is a support tier class with some damage. But with good piloting and in fast enough, you should be able to do some damage as well. In conclusion, Azov is a class that you will enjoy if you like to play support class that requires some level of piloting comes with a good buffering for self and parties. For me, I actually like to play support class more, not gonna lie. You know, I actually sign in a lot of support tier class if you follow my channel long enough. Azov definitely gonna be my support side main for sure. Did you guys try out the new Aisha yet? Don't miss out her new path along with the releasing event. Those are some useful and nice reward for you to use. Shout out to my friends who helped me out for this video. Thanks for the help. What are your expectations for the next war path? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. And make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all on next one.